Okay, so the banner envelope, which is page 32, is this one right here. And I am going to do this binding. I am going to do a hard binding like this, except I'm going to have five pages. And I'm going to be using the quarter of an inch spine piece that I believe is page 41. So I printed it off um, six envelopes on black cardstock. And I, I was, I didn't mean to, but I have printed it off in brown, but that's okay because I'm going to flip it the other way around to um, have the inking on the inside because again, I'm not going to do any inking and I'm going to use another six by six paper pad. And this one is called Fancy That, My Mind's Eye. And I got it at Hobby Lobby. It says $6.99, but I'm probably got it, you know, a percentage off. Not sure how much, but um, so anyways. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this out. I have my paper trimmer here. And you'll need all the flaps on this one. I don't need those tags right there for right now. Maybe I'll use them later. And all I do when I'm trimming out with my paper trimmer is I trim out all of the straight edges. Oops. As best I can, anyway. And then I go in with my scissors. Sometimes I do it like this and sometimes I don't. It just depends on my mood, I guess. So I've already prepared the other four, so I'm just going to show you how I've done one. And then, oops. And I'm just going to take my scissors and start trimming it out. Now, I will tell you that the you know how I said the black is really hard to see when you print black on black? Well, the brown's a little easier. It's not, it's not as easy as if we were printing on white cardstock or craft cardstock or a light colored cardstock. But it's not as bad as printing, printing, printing black on black. out of the way and then again I'm gonna get my fun foam mat my ruler and I'm gonna score this time I'm gonna score all the marks so I don't forget and go to fold it and be like what so I'm just gonna go ahead and prep them all because I'm gonna flip them the other way around this way it just gives me a, a starting point Move this out of the way. I'm trying to think. Do I need to? I think I do. I think I need to go ahead and close them now. Oh, you know what? I don't need this one. I said we need all the flaps. I don't. I don't need this one. So what you want to do is you want to cut that flap off. Like I said, these have been prepared for a while and I forgot what I was doing. These are going to slide over top of those um, hinges. All right, so now that I got that cut off, so that goes that way. And this goes this way. And then this goes this way. Like that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and run my piece of score tape along this flap here. Close it up. Again, you could use whatever glue you want. Like that. Okay, so now this is ready. So what I'm going to do is I've, I've already got the other four prepared and I already got them matted and everything. So this is what they're going to look like. And when you, when you open them up, they're going to be lined a little bit on the inside. And I didn't line that part, but they're going to have 
they're gonna have mats all over them. So I've done that one, and that one. I haven't printed the inserts off yet for this, or done anything with that yet. Uh, there's one. There's another. So now I need to pick out some papers to go on this one. Let's see. So I've got my mind's eye. Fancy that. It's really pretty. I mean, it, uh, it's, it's interesting. Oh. And I got it at Hobby Lobby. I was trying to find some stuff that they have right now so that if you wanted to go get it, you could. So I've got my two pieces, my two choices. And then I have... Let's see, what do I got here? I've got my banner envelope matte templates. So I need that one. That's an A4. That's not an A4. Okay, so I got all three pieces that I need. And now I just need to decide which paper I want where. I think I'm going to have this paper on that part. So again, oh, I need that one. Just lay it down. See how it fits perfectly on the 6x6 six six paper pad? I like it. I like it. I like it. Trace it out. So these are good projects to do when you run out of ink <laughs> or your printer is acting up. You want to make something, but you don't want to print off a whole bunch of pages. You can just throw one of these together. So then I'm going to go ahead and glue it down too. Again, I'm using my fabri -Tac, my Beacon fabri -Tac. There it is. I was, I was going to show you this too because I discovered this while I was making it. I'm going to take this cut off piece that I just cut off of that and I'm going to line the inside of the envelope with it. So it might have been easier to do this before I stuck it together, but oh well. Since I'm using a liquid glue, I should have a minute. So you just stick it in there and wiggle it around until it's exactly where you want it to be. See, that looks really cool. So you didn't waste a single thing on that one. And then, where's my other template? And where's my lid? All right, so this time I'm gonna use this one and I'm gonna line the back side here. Is that, did I ever determine if that was a lid? See, this was actually made to be used with um, your three and a half by 12 cut off, large cut off pieces when you cut your eight and a half by 11 cardstock, or your 12 by 12 down to eight and a half by 11. And this way, it's, it, I did it for six inches so that you could have two pieces. So you could like um, have a double sided tag or you can use, you know, you get more, more out of your paper. All right, so I'm gonna cut that out. I don't do a very good job of cutting that out. If I have my paper trimmer, opened up right here or if I'm planning ahead of time you go ahead and use your paper trimmer and get a nicer cut so then on this piece I'm going to trace out the banner I mean the um, the uh, what's this called the lid the flap did I ever figure out what it was called I don't think I did does it have a name the closure, the, the envelope flap. Yep, whatever. Whatever. All right, so this piece goes right there. And I'm gonna glue that down. Right here, my camera shut off. 
Um, I'm just still matting the envelope here. I'm just adding this back piece that I used with, or that I cut with my matte templates, my add-on matte templates. It doesn't match perfectly, but that's okay. So then, oops, I got a bit of a thingy sticking out. So there, that one's ready to go. So I'm going to add that to the pile. I'm going to put these up. And I'll be right back. All right, so now we're going to do the covers. And I printed off page 41. And this is the one that has the half an inch, quarter of an inch, half an inch, half an inch, quarter of an inch, half an inch, half an inch, quarter of an inch, half an inch, you know. You can do that on your own scoreboard, or you can um, print this out and just use it this way. So all I did was, you know, just scored it with my, my, uh, my bone folder and my ruler. And what I did, where's it at? I've already prepared because I showed you on another video just recently how I did this type of binding. So what I did was my covers, which are page 39, I just laid it down onto some black cardstock and cut it out with my craft knife. Okay, so I did two of these. And then, since I'm going to have five pages, I determined how thick my spine needed to be after I folded it up and then I put a quarter of an inch on either side of that so what is that that is an inch and a half so basically that's what this is about an inch and a half and so that's the spine piece so then I have my two cover pieces which I've already covered I guess I need to I need to cover this other one really quickly so I've got the two front and back cover and the spine piece and then I've already prepared um, that spine piece. Let me move this out of the way. And then I've got a couple of sheets of cardstock that I'm going to use on the spine. And then, since I don't need this, I'm going to move this out of the way. I had printed off an extra envelope. It's the same. It's just one of these. Except I cut everything off but this piece. This, I cut everything off of this piece. So this is the back piece. And what I want to do with this is I'm going to use this as the mat for my covers. Just like that. I am pretty sure that's what, yeah. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use this as the mat. Now, the 6x6 six six cardstock is slightly shy on the length. But I'm going to have a spine piece coming around, so it's not going to matter that much. So I've already covered one. Now let me get the other one covered. Let me pick out a couple. I really like this floral. I think I'm going to go for it. So that's going to be my cover. I like that too. And then, um, oh, maybe I'll do this again as the liner because I did it on the lining on this one. So there's the back side of that. Maybe I'll do that. Because I like the wood. I really like the wood look. So I'm going to lay this down. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be correct that it's going to be bigger than... Yeah, but that's okay. So you just lay it down. Trace it out. And since my spine piece is going to be wrapping around, I think it'll be just fine. So I'm going to... Do that one, and I'm going to do this one, and then cut them both out. I forget which video I did the spine piece in. It was just recently. Was it the, um, the first Ultimate, the largest album? No, I don't think so. Was it... It was the second to largest, so it was the large album, not the largest. It was the one I made for my mom. I'll link that video below so that you can, and there's timestamps in the description of that video, so you can go straight to me doing this spine. So I'm going to go ahead and glue these on before they get lost. So this is going to be my front cover. I just need to make sure that I um, leave the extra space on the right end. So this part I'm going to have sticking out. Need it to be this part's where the spine's going to be. All right. 
attach the side down. And I don't know what I'm going to do with this cover yet either. I prepared this over a week ago and then I kind of lost track of what I was doing. Uh, but that's okay. And then I'm going to lay this down right here. Oh, got the glue too close to the edge there. Okay, so there's my front and back covers. And then, here's my spine piece. Let me see. I've marked these, even though they're going to be, they're going to go... They're going to be raw edges on the top and the bottom, but I've marked the center of each one of these so that I can easily um, attach this down. So uh, I think I left, how big is this? So this is uh, four and three eighths by the four inch height. So this book is, I'm pretty sure, yeah, it's close to four by six, but it's a little bit bigger, obviously. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put glue on here. I'm going to use this kind of glue because it'll give me a minute so I can really move stuff around. And it'll hold really good. And this will be on the outside, so I, don't, I haven't decided what I'm going to use for the inside yet. So I'm just going to match up those two center lines and move it right into place. And then that way, there's no question. It gives me a minute. Totally. Okay, so then what I'll do is I'm going to take my front and back covers and I'm going to glue them down like so onto this piece here. But this time I think I'm going to use score tape. Not that one. So I'm going to put score tape on the end here. That and I'll put score tape on this end here. Like that. And so what I'm gonna do is I also want to point something out. I've noticed that people when they are making this type of spine, they're cracking their paper. Uh, I've seen a lot of videos lately that people are doing that. So I thought I maybe would address that really quickly. No matter what kind of paper you're using, the main goal is to give yourself enough space in that gap. So if you was to go just like some people just use a chipboard, a piece of chipboard, and that's fine, but that's not really going to give you a lot of space. So I would say maybe not a quarter of an inch, but definitely more than an eighth of an inch. So I'll line that up. And that's a lot of space, right? Let me see if I measure it real quick. It's not exactly an eighth of an inch, and it's not exactly a quarter of an inch. It's somewhere in between. But that way, when the two pieces of chipboard fold up towards each other, they're not going to hit each other, and they're not going to crack the paper because they're pulling. So I'm going to flip that over, and I'm going to burnish that down. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to put... Gore tape right here on this end. Like that. And I'm going to put it on this end. Like that. And I'll take the backing off of both. Can I press that down? What the heck? That's never happened to me before. That was weird. Okay. <clears throat> and then again, I'm going to give myself not quite an eighth, not quite a quarter. And I'm going to press it down. So there's my spine piece on the outside and you see how there's no trouble can you see all the extra space in there the chipboards not hitting each other so now I'm gonna do the inside 
and I've cut another piece and I didn't mark it I think I could just match it up to the other pieces but I am going to add some score tape like to this center piece here because this piece is going to be holding the actual spine piece so I'm going to add some to here you don't have to go too crazy I guess it really depends all on what you're doing with it and who's getting it and all of that jazz and I'm gonna put a piece right here Remember, you don't want to get you don't want to get it in the gap there so I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna put a piece on each side of this wait a minute let me make sure I've got the right And since, you know what, since I can see where the piece is going to go, I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit top and bottom here, just so it holds it down pretty good. Matter of fact, I should probably do that to the... to the top and bottom of this too. I don't have to go all the way down. I mean you can, obviously. All right, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna burnish this down, I'm gonna take all the backing off and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've burnished it down, I've taken the backing off, and now I'm going to get my glue stick out. Just cheap Hobby Lobby Paper Studio glue stick. And I am going to, because I'm going to need a little bit of room, a little bit of wiggle room. So I'm going to run my glue stick down the, uh, the tape there. And then I'm just going to take my time, and I'm going to try to match it up with the other side and it should be easy enough I can see it pretty okay as long as I keep it straight I think I'll be fine and yeah got it and you just want to burnish it down again And just take your bone folder and be gentle because you don't want to go through that paper and you just want to work it a little bit and see I've left myself such a nice gap in there that it's bending just fine so I can even do it this way and it's not going to crack the paper so isn't that nice I like it I like it okay so now we've got our covers ready I think it looks pretty cool there's my front, right there. Okay, so now I am going to add the spine piece. Well, first I gotta get it ready. So remember, I'm gonna link the uh, video um, on how I more did this more specifically, the spine piece. Um, but basically all I'm doing is making fins for the envelopes to slide over top of. So I've already put all my tape on here, and this, these, why do I always say these? Ugh. This was measured to the height of the envelope, so when I trimmed it down, I just, it's measured to the height of this envelope. I know it may not look like that right now, but it is. And if it's off a little bit, I can trim it up, no big deal. Just like that. And now I'm going to burnish it down. So I should end up with five fins here. Let's see. So I got one, two, three, four, five. Yep, I got five fins. Let me test it on the envelope, see if it's the right height. Um, it may be a little tall, but I think it'd be fine. Alright, so now I'm going to have to attach it to here. 
So I'm going to have to guess top, bottom, left, right. It shouldn't be too hard. <laughs> it shouldn't be. I'm going to take all this tape off. Uh, you know what other binding you can use for this? You can use the stack the deck binding. That's six fins. So you can just make six envelopes and adjust it accordingly. You can use whatever binding that you like. This one has a name uh, and it's not coming to me. It's not my idea. Um, oh. Hidden hinge, maybe? I don't know. I'm not sure. Alright, I'm gonna put glue stick on this too because I need I need a minute. Not too much. Because I've done that before where I put too much glue stick and it won't grab at all. Alright, so I'm just gonna try, I'm gonna try to eyeball it here. And maybe get some of that glow stick off the end. I wanna go in the center, both up, down, and left, right. I don't know, we'll see. We'll see how good I am at that. I feel like one side's good. Did I get it? I think I might have. I think I might have got it. You just want to give it a good push. You want that tape to make good contact. If I had to choose a specific binding method, I would have rather use the stack the deck. I think it, it's more flexible. This seems much, uh, it seems stiffer. I don't know. But I don't use this one very often. I just included it in the printable because. That way you don't have to measure so much stuff. Um, you obviously had to measure this to cut it down, but for the largest album, you just, you don't have to measure it. All right, I think I got it in there pretty good. I do, I do. All right, so now I'm just gonna start adding them in. I'm gonna start at the back and work my way. And I think I'm just gonna show you how I do one, because I've showed you how to do this before too. Uh, this time I'm using the Fabri-Tac from Beacon. I've used the Scotch Quick Dry many times. I like that too. But this is just what I have sitting on my workspace. And then since we cut that bottom off, all we have to do is slide that over top of that little hinge there. We want to don't go too don't go past the the score. Make sure we're straight. And press it down. All right, there's one. Yahoo! All right, I'm gonna do. I'll do one more. I'll do one more, and then I'll do the rest off camera. Just I like to line it up with the one before that so that they're they're both even. Because once you start getting off, they all get off. You know, they all get in, end up getting cattywalked. All right, so I'm gonna attach the rest, and I will be turned. Okay, so I've got all of my envelopes in. All five. Lovely. Looks nice. So the inserts, um, you're, what you're supposed to use for inserts for this envelope is the large three and a half by 12 inch cutoff piece. Um, and technically you can just fold that in half and it'll fit right inside this envelope, perfect. But since we don't have those pieces, we were using the uh, six by six paper pad. What I did was I just got some black cardstock and just cut it down to three and a half inches wide. And then the six inch, would be too long because we've got that half an inch taken up down here. 
So then I cut it down to five and a half, and it should fit in here just perfect. And I'm not going to mat them just yet because I'm not sure exactly what I want to do. I think maybe the pictures, I'm going to put pictures on these mats. So I think I'm just going to leave them, leave them be for now. Um, but I wanted to put a closure on there. Well, I found these online. They are uh, thin, clear fasteners, and they're little round circles, and I thought, ooh, thin, clear, perfect, that'll be great, because you don't need, you know, sometimes you just don't need, like, a super heavy-duty hold. Well, and they are, they're thin, and they're tiny, and part of them are clear. Half of it's clear, and half of it's white. So what I did um, is, on the white part, I just colored it with a black Sharpie. Um, I did make the mistake of putting the clear part onto the black part before the Sharpie was dry. So all I did was I took my white part, see here's the clear, and here's the white. So you can't really see the clear if you, if you do it right, if you don't get your Sharpie on the clear. And I just took my black Sharpie and I just literally colored it in. And I already did that one right there because I heat set it so that the Sharpie would be dry. And then all you got to do is match the two up. I'm not going to do the one I just did. I'm going to let that dry first. Match them up like that. And then I'm going to take it over here and put the black part down onto the black envelope. Like that. And I'm going to peel it, all, hopefully, without getting my fingers all over everything. Come on. Let it go. Okay, and then I'm just going to flip it over and press it down. And it should not have transferred any ink, I'm hoping. Oh, it didn't. You see how that looks clear? It doesn't, it doesn't get in the way, it doesn't jump out at you, and that's black. It's not an exact perfect match, but it's not as near as noticeable as the white dot would have been. So I thought that was a perfect solution. So I'm really not... 100% sure what I want to do with either one of these albums. Let me grab the other one. Um, remember, I've started putting pictures of my son and his friends in this one, but it really doesn't match the paper. You know, it's... We'll see. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. So I'm going to leave both of these the way they are right now because um, I don't really know what I'm going to do with them. But I just wanted to really show you how to put it together. So, and the little Velcro dots are really cool because, see, let's see. That one you can see a little bit of black. See, that's maybe if I if I'm quick enough. That one you can see the black. That one, see. So you just need to heat set it if you're going to do the little sharpie trick or whatever black marker you happen to have. So let me know what you think of these. Uh, give me a thumbs up and uh, give this a try. It, it was so easy to make these. These are so simple. Um, so give it a try, and if you if you give it a try, let me know. Post me, or post me, tag me in a post, a Facebook post, or if you make a video, tag me in it. I want to see the kind of cool stuff that you all do with these um, with these plant templates. Know. Let me know if you have anything you want to see specific that you've that you've seen me use or do or whatever so far. And I'll put all links below um, in the description box. And I guess that's it. So I will see you next time. Bye.